With the GPU shortage still going strong in 2021, AMD has finally released their Ryzen 5000 series APUs to the DIY market. I picked up the 5700G, which is their highest offering in their G series lineup right now, to see if it could fill the GPU gap. Let's take a look at it. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel. The Ryzen 5 3400G was a huge step in the APU market when it hit shelves in 2019. I mean, it had four cores and eight threads, boosted to 4.2 gigahertz, and it demolished anything that Intel was putting out around that time. Plus, it came in at $150 USD. That's a great price for a higher end CPU at the time. Well, in today's market, 2021, that just doesn't cut it anymore. Four cores and eight threads cannot handle the things that people are trying to do these days on their PCs. Meet AMD's newest G series chips, the Ryzen 5 5600G and the Ryzen 7 5700G, which I have the Ryzen 5 5700G here. So I grabbed the top of the line one because I have the top of the line one that they offered back in 2019. So I figured I'd put them up against each other. The 5700G comes in at 359 MSRP, but for some reason on Amazon and Newegg, they're selling for 369 now. What's going on with that AMD? It is eight cores and 16 threads with a max boost up to 4.6 gigahertz. And it comes with Vega 8 graphics instead of Vega 7 like the 5600G. But I really think that using the Vega graphics in these processors is what limits them greatly. If they would have used like the new Navi graphics that they're putting in their new RX 6000 series cards, it would really make a difference with these chips. But maybe they can't work like that. Now, I'll leave affiliate links below in case you're interested in picking up any of these parts that I'm using on my test bench here, but here they are. The test bench consists of the MSI B550M Mortar Wi-Fi motherboard, which I absolutely love. I've never done a dedicated review on this board, but this board is awesome. For the price and the performance that it gives you and all the options that are on the board, you can't beat this for B550. Write that down. Then I used two sticks, eight gigs each, of G-Skills Trident Z RAM at 3200 megahertz. I did enable the XMP profiles. I have a Corsair CX650M power supply, and I'm using AMD's Wraith Prism cooler. This used to come with the Ryzen 7 processors back in the 2000 and 1000 series. You can pick these up for 20 to 30 bucks on the used market or on eBay. They're really great. They have a copper heat sink on the bottom that connects to the pipes. In fact, it's just the copper pipes smashed down, um, but it's, it's thick, it has a good fan, it's not super loud, but it does a really good job of cooling for air cooling. So I use that for both processors. And then I'm using my EVGA RTX 3060 XC gaming card. This card is awesome. I did a full dedicated review on this card. And in fact, I'll leave it up in the YouTube card if you wanna check it out because this card is so good and I don't think you should buy any other 3060 because it comes in at $400 or less, which is a really good deal. Yes, I know, if you can get a hold of them. All the tests that I ran on this benchmark suite are ran on the lowest settings so that I can give the APUs a fighting chance and leave it consistent throughout the testing to show the increase by adding things or taking things away. First thing I wanna take a look at is the APU performance and then I'll move on to GPU and APU together. I did this test on 1080p and it's a three run average with no DLSS and no ray tracing enabled on my test bench here. The games I ran are Control, Shadow the Tomb Raider, Overwatch, and Rainbow Six Siege, the Vulcan API. You can see between the 3400G and the 5700G, Rainbow Six Siege climbed out at 68.9 versus 61.8. Overwatch had the biggest increase at 109.3 to 91.1. And like I said, these are all in the lowest settings. I just needed the APUs really can't run on anything other than lowest settings. You can tweak things maybe on Overwatch and Rainbow Six, but when it comes to like Shadow, the Tomb Raider, and Control, you can see they struggled, even the 5700G struggled to get 30 FPS. I wouldn't use it just for that, but in reality, the 5700G with its eight cores and 16 threads is gonna make you more money being like a workstation type of thing. If you needed it in a very small case or a case that didn't need integrated graphics, the eight core 16 thread chip would be the better bet. Like I said, I'm just a little disappointed with the APU performance on the newer gen chips, 
but the new G series chips really shine when paired with a dedicated GPU. Look at this. Same test, same settings, everything. Rainbow Six with the 3060 and the 3400G ran in at 309.4, but with the 5700G, it jumped all the way up to 380.9. Now that is all on the CPU because I use the lowest settings. This, the GPU is unaffected in this. This is really on the CPU. Overwatch climbed to 276.2 versus the 3400G's 182.7. Shadow of the Tomb Raider had a climb for 147.1 compared to the 93.8 on the 3400G. And even Control climbed all the way up to 175.8 versus 125.7. I was really impressed of the increase of at least 50 FPS on all of those games across the board. Between the 3400G and the 5700G, this thing killed it. Now, if you bump the settings up to max, the CPU really doesn't even matter anymore. It kind of gets taken out of the equation. Even at 1080p, you become GPU bound at that point if you max out your settings. I played Overwatch on max settings just to kind of prove it to myself, and it ran 138.9 FPS with the 5700G and 131.6 FPS with the 3400G. I mean, it was only, what, seven, six or seven FPS difference between the two CPUs. Now, Overwatch is not an overly demanding game, but it kind of leveraged onto the GPU at that point. So if you plan on playing high setting 1080p, or if you're thinking about dabbling in 1440p with something like a 3060, you're gonna end up being GPU bound, so your CPU will not matter. You could use a five or six year old CPU at that point and still get the same frame rate, most likely. AMD's new APUs, the 5700G and the 5600G, are not a replacement for a good GPU and CPU combo. In fact, you can pair a budget CPU and GPU combo from a few years ago, like a GTX 1060 or an RX 580, and get better performance than that APU is gonna get you in any game. And you're gonna pay less money than you will for just the CPU alone. But if you need a CPU now, and you don't wanna buy something used, these can be a good solution for a short time. You can buy a 5600G or a 5700G and use it by itself with the system, which you can't do with a regular AMD processor like a 5600X or a 5800X. Now, these chips are not going to be faster than those chips. I'd say the 5700G is kind of like a 5800 non-X version if it existed, and the 5600G is more like a 5600X non-X, if that makes sense. A 5600X is going to blow away a 5600G in performance for dollar. If you pair the 3060 with both those processors, the 5600X is going to beat it. In fact, maybe I'll put my 5700G against my 5600X and see what happens. Really, for this video, I just wanted to be able to get AMD's newest APU offering and run it against their oldest APU offering on the high-end scale. And I was both pleased and disappointed at the same time because where their APU performance kind of lacks, their CPU performance is greatly increased over the last generation of processors. My recommendation to you is just spend the extra little bit of money if you're going with a dedicated GPU anyways, buy a 5600X instead of a 5600G because it's only 40 or 50 bucks more and you get much more performance out of that CPU. But if you're not buying a GPU right now or you can't get a hold of a GPU, a 5700G or a 5600G could do you wonders until you can fill that void. Speaking of the 5600X, if you're interested in that processor, maybe picking it up for yourself, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that bell notification because I'm doing a video about the 5600X right now and you might not want to miss it. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next video. It got me stone cold